This is an Inkling, the main playable species in the Splatoon games. The other being Octolings which are also playable, but they come with a $20 price tag. Inklings have a wide range of abilities, they can change shapes between kid form and squid form, they can jump really high, they can shoot ink through weapons, and they can even reform their physical bodies after their old ones die. But what if I told you that not all of that is true? What if I told you that this is not actually an Inkling? This is also not an Inkling, and this is definitely not an Inkling, but it is also not an Octoling. Don't worry, I have not lost my mind from playing too much Car Quest, I just have a theory that I hope you hear out. Let's begin with the basics. This is an Inkling, and this is not an Inkling. They look very similar, but function very differently. While both can change between squid and human form, this is where their similarities end. The in-battle Inklings can get splatted, the in-square Inklings? We don't know. It's not legal to try, and the research board did not approve, so TBD. Hand in hand with being splatted is the ability to respawn, but given the lack of respawn points in the square, we can assume that respawning is not something that happens often, if at all, in the area. And finally, in battle inklings get their abilities powered up based on the gear they're wearing. Meanwhile, in square inklings get nothing but drip. So let's start there. Why is it that our gear has no effect in the square but all effect in online play? Do the clothes have an on and off switch? Is Zincopolis running some weird electromagnetic field to disable abilities in the city? Or perhaps the abilities function as expected, just not on actual inklings? And what about the whole dissolving in water thing? Since Zincopolis is based on Japan, we can guesstimate that it should be raining roughly 30% of the time. Does this mean that these inklings must remain indoors at all costs, or risk getting something way worse than a cold. What about those sudden summer rains? If rain and water were really such a dangerous problem, the architecture of Splatoon's world ought to reflect it. Just like the tactile paving on pedestrian paths are there to help prevent blind people from accidentally stepping out onto the road, you'd expect there to be something, anything, to prevent inklings from getting rained on. Yet we see a world full of nice open spaces, having a great view of the sky, and nothing to protect us from it. Maybe prevention isn't such a big issue, but at the very least, being able to recover from a problem when it happens is. That's why we have things like fire extinguishers and AEDs in most buildings. They're there to help just in case something not so good has happened. So you'd expect to see at least one spawn point somewhere in the area, just in case a silly little inkling wanted to try dancing in the rain or forgot the umbrella at home. Yet we see no respawn points at all. Could it be that the real inklings haven't developed safeguards for these things because water isn't actually a problem for them? And if water isn't actually a problem for them, maybe other other liquids like ink aren't either. We have several examples of inklings that we know are inklings getting covered in ink and uh, basically nothing happening. First we have Callie in the single player mode, who you've probably covered in ink yourself at least once, only to see her shake it off like nothing ever happened. You could say that our ink has no effect on her since she isn't an inkling but a cuddling, you get it cause she's a cuttlefish like her grandpa Captain Cuttlefish, who we can also cover in ink and uh, nothing happens. But what about that one? Agent 3 is a pure bona fide inkling, and we have to battle them during the Octo Expansion escape sequence. Except they don't get splatted either, just defeated, more like stunned. So why is it that the three normal inklings we know of don't get splatted? But when I enter an X-Rank match, this happens. Makes you wonder if the character being splatted during an online battle is something different, something not inkling. But then what would it be? It seems to me that whatever this is, the main part of it is the little spirit looking thing that flies off once you get splatted. It is able to see what's going on even after the main body has disappeared, which is why we get that nice little look around even after we're dead. It is also needed to respawn the in-battle inkling, which is why we see it floating back into the respawn point. And finally, it is able to sort of manipulate physical objects, like making the little lifesaver things in Salmon Run move around. But then what exactly is it? I think there are two possible explanations, feel free to comment a third. The first is a simple but boring one, the spirit thing could be the actual inkling. Not the kid, not the squid, the spirit is the inkling. It can recreate its full physical form with just a little bit of ink, but the memories, the personality, the everything else that makes it an individual is held within the little spirit. This explanation leaves a lot of questions like what happens when there's no respawn point nearby? How long can these spirits exist without a full physical body? Can they take 
take on other forms too, not just squid or kid? Can they control things other than ink? Can they become champion? Either way, it would mean that this is not an inkling, this is. The second explanation is that the little spirit thing is not a spirit at all, nor a living thing, but rather a very fancy piece of technology. What if this machine is able to manipulate ink, just like real inklings, but has no mind of its own? It is simply controlled by inklings. The ink link, as I will call it, is a device that works similar to a VR set, allowing a real inkling to connect to this machine from a safe location and use wireless communication to control its actions. The machine would absorb some ink and mimic real inkling abilities while going into battle. Returning to the respawn point once the ink body dissolves either due to being splattered or touching water. Since it is a machine, it could easily tweak some of its attributes and abilities due to the gear equipped to it. It would also explain why salmonids ignore us once we get splatted. The appearance of an inkling might be threatening to the salmons, but the appearance of a random machine is not. With the inkling, inklings can go out into battle and work for Grisco without being put in actual danger. They simply plug and play, as they say. This theory is also backed up by the architectural designs in the game. The Salmon Run boat has a large antenna. We go into online battles by entering a radio tower, and while the same cannot be said about the single player modes, it is within the realm of possibility. Maybe the real Agent 4 is inside the little house thing, or plugs into an inkling in a room right beneath the grates, and then explores the Octarian domain deep below. We only get a few lives in the domain since there is very little power or ink available for the ink link to take shape once it's plotted. And in Octo Expansion, we can't re-enter the train directly once we enter a test site. The train also doesn't really seem to be linked to a track? And it definitely looks empty if you try to peek in. Could it be that the real Agent 8 actually remains on the real train far in the distance, but then uses an inkling, or I guess in this case an octolink, to take the tests? This would make more sense, especially with other creatures of the deep being test subjects and all. You can't tell me that poor old Iso Padre survived being blown up by the trigger happy cucumber several times, and now just casually rides the train with it. Although I guess this might imply that the inkling technology could also be used by other creatures. Perhaps they can use the ink to take on other forms too, mimic other life forms abilities, allow us to play as other species, eh? eh? Who knows? He knows! The Octarian Samurai is the only character we see that also uses a respawn point but isn't anything similar to the Inklings or Octolings that we play as. And the Octo Samurai also has the little Octo Link thing when we splat him. The only way to defeat this boss is by breaking the respawn point. If the Octo Link is just a piece of tech without a respawn point, it is now a bodiless, useless machine. Meanwhile, the real Octo Samurai is still alive and well in their control room, which I assume has a very overused couch and several empty chip bags. The Inklings, being technology, would also explain why companies like Grisco exist. After all, nothing in Incopolis really seems to scream, we need a lot of electricity to run this, so why harvest so many eggs? Why is the Zapfish so important? Wouldn't it be funny sad if part of the online play was locked off until you returned the Zapfish? At least then we'd have a pretty solid sign that these Inklings Inklings are what require a lot of energy to run. Or maybe maintaining the pools of ink to respawn is what takes up a lot of energy, which is why the energy poor Octarian areas give us a limited number of respawns. Either way, the existence of inklings as machines that inklings control makes a lot more sense to me than these two being the same thing. Okay, maybe I have been playing a little too much Car Quest. So uh, let me know what you think about all this. Corporate wants to know, what is the difference between these two images? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in Splatoon. Tune 3.